Welcome to the Football Manager Britain Tactics video podcast. Um, the whole purpose of this series is just to show a few different situations in the match engine and then show you how you can use these situations to help read the match engine. This week we're going to take a look at defending, uh, that's been a big topic on the forums, and specifically defending in the midfield. And what we're going to look at today is the problem of covering both the wings without leaving a massive hole in the centre of the park. So we'll start off watching some viewer PKMs, that's the match files that you can save, uh, and we'll take a look at those, analyse those and show where things are going wrong and how hopefully to fix them. OK, now this is a goal in Capel 10's PKM between Staines and Woking. We'll just watch the goal through in full time in 2D. Now the reason I'm doing this in 2D is because it's a lot easier to see the way that people are positioned and the way that they move. So if we just watch this through, the problem should become apparent straight away. Uh, but if not, then we'll go through it in more detail in a minute. So let's watch the goal again now and look, watch it in a little bit more detail. It comes mainly from a throw-in. The ball's played around a little bit. But we knew the problem when we paused the game here. The number seven here is the winger for Woking, the human-controlled side, and isn't doing any work to close down the opposition fullback here. The opposition winger is being watched by the human fullback. The winger isn't doing enough work to close this guy down. What this ends up doing is forcing the central midfielder to try and close him down, the number nine here, the central midfielder. He pulls across, which leaves this massive space in the middle which the centre midfielder manages to exploit. That allows the central midfielder to play it to the other central midfielder who can play it quickly to the striker. The striker makes a little bit of space and scores, like so. Just to highlight this issue again with a better team, uh, this one is from Nenad Filipovic, AC Milan against Bari. Bari are on the attack here, and we can see again the number 20 here, Di Maria, the winger is not doing enough to close down the opposition winger or the opposition fullback. And also his own fullback isn't doing enough. So that's forcing Pirlo, the central midfielder, to push in, leaving a bigger gap here in the centre. And Gazi therefore is allowed to get the ball. Fortunately, Milan are allowed to clear it. But exactly the same thing is going to happen right after this, showing that he is an actual problem with the team. Ball again cleared, but Di Maria, the winger, has gone to the fullback, but there's nobody here to cover the opposition winger because the AC Milan fullback isn't doing anything. That's going to force Pirlo across yet again and is going to leave a massive hole in the centre here. And only because Bari make the wrong pass decision does it really break down. So in both of those PKMs, we saw a major problem. That was that neither were the wings being covered properly nor is enough cover being given to the centre of the field. Now this is a dual problem. There are two things that need to be considered. The first is that the wings need to be covered properly, and the second is that there needs to be a way of holding enough players in the centre of the park. Now, the decision that I took when I saw that I was getting this issue was to tell my players to close down the opposition wingers and the opposition fullbacks using opposition instructions. So I told my guys to always close down the opposition fullbacks and the opposition wingers. And as we'll see in the next PKM, that didn't solve the dual problem, but it solved one of the problems. Okay, this is one of my PKMs, which will hopefully show the dual problem. You have to mark the wings, but you also have to mark the centre. Here, I've told my guys to close down the opposition's wing defenders, and this is what's going on. We've got the number seven here who's my winger, marking the opposition's winger. But we've still got the problem that the centre of the midfield isn't adequately covered. My central midfielder, for some reason, is deciding that he's going to help that my wing players out. So my central midfielder, this one here, has come across to the wingers. For what reason? Who knows? But that's left this massive gap in the centre. And much like Cable 10's goal, Exactly the same thing happens again. Loads of space, central midfielder to central midfielder to striker, goal. Although in this case, it was because of a rebound. So that's the basic summary of that. You've got to solve both problems. You can't just mark everybody down the wing because then you're going to leave the hole in the centre and that's why I conceded that goal. The next PKM I'm going to show you 
is somebody playing a 4-5-1 come 4-3-3. Now that does solve the other problem, the problem that I didn't solve. It keeps enough players in the centre of the park so that there's no big gap. I was playing 4-4-2, as was Nenad and as was Capel 10. So that's the reason, or one of the reasons, why there was a big hole in the centre once one of the midfielders pulled across. Because you then move to a 4-3-3, which is what the next manager has done, you don't get that big hole in the centre of the park. But you don't solve the dual problem. You only solve one of the issues. So there's no big hole in the centre in this next PKM, but there's also a hell of a lot of space going down the wings. So while my PK may have solved the problem down the wing, but not in the centre, this one's the opposite. It solves the problem in the centre, but not the one down the wing. Now, as we've just seen, the opposition were allowed to spend a lot of time running with the ball down this wing, particularly the winger, who managed to go from the halfway line through to about here without any challenge from the human fullback. Now, as we can see, the opposition fullback has managed to push forward into the space left here, and there is nobody marking him and he has a clear line of sight here through to one of the strikers and through to his wing partner. Now the advantage that Hoffenheim have got here because they're playing a 4-3-3 come 4-5-1 formation is that the number 20, who is one of the wingers, can pull across. But we can also see that the 36 here, the 23 here and the 21 here are all central midfielders. One's a defensive midfielder, the other two are MCs. So even if one of these decides to pull across as well, uh, in this case the 36 is marking the 11, we still have two guys left in the centre. So the centre, there's no big hole in the middle. Everybody is reasonably well covered. But the problem now is that there's clear lines of sight to anybody that pulls wide. As the ball is cleared again, we have the same problem. Herpia now can knock it to the fullback very easily because the winger has decided to come inside rather than keeping him to his man on the wing. The ball eventually does work its way out, and now Kadlech has wing options yet again. This time he actually makes the wrong decision and miscontrols it. Uh, but we do find ourselves yet again in a poor situation. The goal itself, a bit of a fluke. So there we have it, dealing with the dual problem. You need to make sure that you're covering the guys down the wings, and you also need to make sure you're covering the guys through the centre. The way I chose to deal with it was to use opposition instructions on the guys on the wings, which did work to an extent, but left a massive hole in the middle. So you need to make sure you're covering that too. Personally, I would use opposition instructions, but you don't have to. As Dirty Ace has shown, you can also play three guys in the centre to cover everybody in the middle, but you do then need to make sure that you're also covering the wings. You need to make sure that the fullbacks are involved, as well as the wingers. So, make sure you're watching your games, and make sure you can see these problems as they occur. That's it for this edition of the podcast. If you've got any questions or you want to send any PKMs for me or the Think Tank to have a look through, then just send them to thinktank at fm-britain.co.uk and we'll be happy to have a look through those. So until next time, see you again.